tests and review of the Planet Waves O port. The O port comes under two different makes, even though they both seem to be made in the same factory. And the makes are D Adorio and Planet Waves. And they're available in two colours, black and a kind of ivory cream. And the O port comes in two sizes, large for a four inch hole and small for a three and a half inch hole, though there is some slight flexibility. And the O port I'll be testing today will be the Planet Waves cream four inch version. And the guitar I'll be testing it on will be a Washburn Comfort Series G25SCE. And you might remember I used this same guitar to test power pins on. And using the same guitar, I can compare the tests to tell you which is best, the power pins or the O port. Right, let's take a look at the O port first. And it's made of a kind of flexible plastic that is really overpriced for what it is. And you wouldn't think it would have a positive impact on sound because it's obviously got no resonance of its own. However, it's important to say that this has to be flexible in order to fit inside the guitar, otherwise there'd be no way of getting it inside the hole. An important bit of information you might need is that the O port is 45 millimeters deep and 177 millimeters wide. So if you've got a narrow bodied guitar, it might be worth you checking the measurements before you buy one. So, firstly, how to fit the O-port on your guitar. To fit the O-port then, the first thing you need to do is get unhindered access to the sound hole. And to do this, we need to get the strings out of the way so we can access the hole. And the best way to do this is just to loosen the strings off as far as you can and push them aside. And then you can push the O-port through the strings and into the hole. However, because these strings have now been removed from the guitar several times, they're pretty worn out, so I'm going to replace the strings this time. And I'll use this as an opportunity to answer a question I've had in the comments, and that is why I prefer to change the strings if I've taken them off the guitar and put them back on once. The reason is this, if you get hold of a string and bend it back and forward for long enough, it will break. And this effect is called work hardening. But well before the metal gets to the point where the string will break, the properties have already started changing. And this affects the way the string stretches and the way the string vibrates. And therefore, it ruins the tone of the guitar. So, if you've taken the string off and put it on a couple of times, it's always best to change the strings. But if you're just learning on the guitar or using it for practicing, it really doesn't make any difference. It's only if you get really fussy about the tone and you're doing something like recording. Right, once you've got the strings out of the way or removed them, you need to make sure the O port is facing in the right direction so that the cutout is lining up with the fingerboard. You can now crush the O port between your fingers so that it can fit through the hole. However, if you can avoid it, don't crush it down too hard because I've seen a few reviews where people have had O ports split on them and the plastic break. So just crush it as far as you have to to get it through the hole. And you might need to maneuver the O port slightly to get it round the bracing because you don't want to put any pressure on it or damage anything inside there. Once you've got the O port fitted correctly in place, so that the edges of the sound hole fit into the groove in the O port. Then you can just turn it around slightly to make sure that the cutaway in the O port is lining up correctly with the end of the fingerboard. And that's it, the job's done. And as you can see, it fits really neatly inside the guitar and it's not putting any stress on any of the bracing and it's not putting any stress on the footing for the neck either. The only problem I can see is with it in place, it's going to be impossible to access the truss rod end to adjust the truss rod. 
However, hopefully I won't need to do that. But if you decided you were going to leave it on the guitar permanently, you'd just have to remove it every time you adjusted the truss rod, which is a bit of a pain, but it's doable. Alternatively, I'd be tempted to make a hole in the sound port itself so that I wouldn't have to remove it. And I think a great improvement for a future version of this would be a bung that you could remove so you could adjust the truss rod without having to remove the entire thing. Right, all I've got to do now to finish this job up is put the strings back on. However, if you've just loosened off your strings, you just need to tune them up again. Once you've got it fitted, it's fairly discreet, but it's pretty obvious you've got a no port fitted. And from this point of view, maybe the black one would be better because it wouldn't be so obvious. But it depends if you like the look or not. Personally, I don't think it looks particularly nice. However, are you concerned about how the thing looks? I mean, that's a decision you'd have to make. What is important is what effect it has on the sound. So let's do some tests now to see what we think. Comparisons of the same guitar without an O-port and with an O-port. And the first test I'll do will just be the open strings. And I'll do it firstly without the O-port using a microphone, then with the O-port using a microphone, then without the O-port using the pickup, and then with the O-port using a pickup. Test one, the sound of the guitar using a microphone without the O-port and then with it. The same test, but this time using the internal pickup. With these tests, I allowed the guitar to fade out completely, which is why there's a big gap between them. I don't know if it comes across on the YouTube video, but here I could definitely hear the guitar still ringing right the way to the end of each sample. Here's that test again, but this time without the O-port and with the O-port very quickly without the gaps, so you can really hear the difference. And these are the tests with the microphone. In my mind, 
you can definitely hear the difference between the O-port guitar and the non-O-port guitar. And you can hear that there's more volume and more richness to the tone of the guitar with the O-port. And you can actually see with the waveform that where the O-port was used, it's actually clipping slightly because it's producing that much more power. But as I kind of suspected would be the case, the output has very little difference on the sound of the guitar with the pickup. However, personally, I'm quite pleased about that. Right, for the next set of tests, I'll use a finger picking tune so I can see how the output copes with string isolation and arpeggiation. Right, here's the test with the microphone and no output. Now with the O-port. Again, there's definitely a difference. So here's a fast cut version so you can hear the differences yourself. And here that is again. Here's that same test again, but this time I'm recording it using the pickup. Here it is with the opal. And here's the fast cut version of that test, so you can really hear the difference. And here that test is again. Personally, I think with this test, the difference between the guitar with the O-port and without was far greater, and you could hear an improvement in the tone quite clearly. And surprisingly, you could even hear a difference between the recordings of the guitar done with the pickup, which surprised me, but I think it actually improved the tone slightly. Right, let's do the same tests again. But this time we'll see how the O port affects the sound of strumming. And as with the previous tests, we'll start with the guitar going through a microphone.
plays the same tune with the O-Port. Here's the faster cut version of the same test so you can hear the difference. Let's hear that again. Again, you can definitely hear the difference between the guitar with the O-Port and the guitar without the O-Port. Let's see if strumming makes any difference with the pickup. And here's the same tune with the O-Port. Right, let's hear a fast cut version of those tests to see if there's any difference. And here's that last test one last time. I must admit, this last test has left me slightly confused because you can hardly hear or see any difference between the two recordings, the one with the O-Port and the one without it. However, you can hear it physically here in the room. And I think that's because the sound is projected so it doesn't come across so well with the microphone directly in front of the guitar. So to prove this, I'd have to come back to this in the future and try this test again, but in a far larger room, so I can prove that the sound is being projected forward. However, for now, you'll just have to believe me. Hopefully, I've made these tests comprehensive enough that you can make your own decisions on them. Or you can listen to them a few times and decide whether you think the guitar sounds better with the O-Port or without it. However, I also did more tests over several days to make sure I thoroughly tested the thing. And these are my thoughts on it. The O-Port definitely works. And you can hear a difference straight away. Part of the effect the O-Port has on the sound is to even out the EQ. And what I mean by this is you lose some of the very high end and you lose some of the very bottom end 
and the mid ranges are boosted. And this is partly what gives you the impression of more volume. However, it also definitely projects the guitar further. So if you were a busker or a worship leader in a church playing acoustically, this would definitely help your guitar sound project around a room or around the noisy street. So for certain people, it's a definite brilliant investment. And if I was to compare this, which is half the price of the power pins with the power pins, I would go with this every time because it works very effectively. And I think it can improve the right guitar. But taking this in mind, if you've got a very rich guitar to start with, it could make it sound muffled and quite ugly. So for some guitars, it would be really great, others not so much. And I think where it'll make a big difference is on a cheaper guitar or a guitar with a smaller body because it gives the tone a little more richness, making it sound like it's got a deeper body or a more expensive tone. So basically, for the right person, I reckon this is a really worthwhile purchase and it's approximately £20, which when you think it's just a piece of plastic seems too much. But for the effect it gives, it's actually very cheap. And just as a point of interest, there are some luthiers who actually turn the wooden equivalent of an O-port with a lathe and fit that into the guitar when they're constructing it. So it's clearly got some merit. With all of the tests in this video, the guitar was recorded with no effects and no modification, so you'd have a better idea of how the O-port affects the sound. However, here's the guitar recorded with effects and modification so you can hear how it will sound with the O-port recorded as you would normally. And finally, to conclude this review, which is better, the power pins or the O-port? I'd say without doubt the O-port. It's half the price of the power pins, it's easier to fit than the power pins, and it actually works really well, whereas I got really mixed results with the power pins. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And also, it'll help my videos be found by the YouTube algorithm, because it prefers videos that have got a few likes. And I'll be making some new guitar lessons now. I'll be adding to the finger picking course and doing various videos that are linked with the year courses. So if you want to see those, like and subscribe and you'll be notified when I've done them. And if you're looking for some guitar lessons or a professional, properly structured guitar course, you can find them in the playlists on my YouTube channel. Or take a look at www.ebooksforguitar.com and there's loads of courses there that are completely free and you don't have to sign up for anything. Thank you very much for watching.